Hello guys. In this video, I gonna talk about decode problem 1055. This is a question asked in Google interviews. In this video, I gonna propose three approaches to solve this problem. The first approach, we will try to solve it with running time order of n square. Then we will try to improve it into order of n log n. And finally, we will try to solve it with running time order of n. So the input of the problem has two strings. One is the source and the other is the target. And then we need to find the minimum number of subsequences of the source to form the target string. For example, let's assume we have the source string as a, b, c, d. And the target would be a, a, b, a, c, b. And now we need to find the minimum number of subsequence of the source to form the target. Let's use position to represent the start searching position in the source string and the counter to represent the number of sources we need to form the target string. So let's initialize the position to zero and counter to zero, which means we start searching in source at index zero and the number of count number of sources we need is zero. So the first character in the target is A. And we find A is at position zero in the source. So we need to update position to one, which means for the next character in the target, we should start searching at position one in the source. And we increment counter by one. So which means we need one source stream to form the string A. And the following character in target is A again. And now we start searching A again after uh, starting at position one. So starting from here, we find that there's no A. So which means we need to increment the counter by one. So, so that we can start searching from position zero again for A. And we find A exists at position zero. So we update the position to one again, which means for the next character in target, we should start searching at position one in the source. So the next character in the target is B, and we start searching for B starting at position one in the source string, and we find that B is in the source string at position one. So we need to update position to two, which means for the next character in the target, we should start searching for that character in the source starting at position two. And the counter will remain the same as two because the B is in the, B is after character A in the source. So the next character in the target is A again. And we don't find A after uh, starting at position two in the source string, we don't find A. So we increment the counter by one, which is three. And now we find A again, starting with position zero, and we find A in the position zero. So we update position to one. And then we need to find the character C. And we find a C after uh, starting at position one in the source string, we find a C at position two. So we update the position to three, which means for the next character, we should start searching it at position three in the source. And then the counter should remain the same as three. Uh, and now the last character we need to search is B. And uh, starting searching B up, uh, at uh, index three in the source, we find it doesn't exist. So we should increment the counter by one. And then uh, we find, uh, we start searching for B starting from position zero in the source and we find it's in the position of one. So we update the position to two. So which means for the next uh, for the next character in the target, we should start searching it at position two in the source string. And that's the end of the loop. So we find the output, the counter is four. So which means we need four sources 
to form the target string. So this is my implementation of the algorithm in Python. So we initialize the position at zero and initialize the counter to one. And we find the character for each character in the target, we find the character in the source after position i. And if it doesn't exist, then we try to find it starting from position zero. And if it still doesn't exist, then we return negative one. If it exists, we increment the counter by one, and then we update the position to the next character in the source, which is incre increment the position to the next one. And then finally, we return the counter. So we loop through each character in the target. And then for, for every loop, we need to find the character in the source. So the running time would be order of n squared. So this is order of n, and every find is order of n. So it's order of n squared. And the space complexity would be order of 1, because we don't need extra space in it, so it's constant. So when we look at the second loop, the find in the source, I think we can further improve the second loop uh, by using the binary search. What we can do is we can build a map of the source stream with the positions for each character. Uh, for example, if we assume the source stream is ABC, ABBA, then we can build a map for A is at position 0, 3, and 6, and B we have it in position 1, 4, and 5. And the C, we have it in position 2. Then for each find, instead of doing it linear, we can do it log n by using binary search. So the mapping would be a character to a list of the positions in the source string. And then this is the main logic. So if the character, so we loop through each character in the target. If it doesn't exist in the mapping, we return negative one, which means we cannot form the target with the source. Otherwise, we find the position array, and then we do binary search on the position array to find the character. So this will be order of n to loop through the target. And every search would be order of log n, because we are doing binary search on it. So the total running time will be order of n log n. And the space complexity would be order of n because we need to store a mapping of the character to positions. Now let's try further improve the algorithm by saving the running time more. So this is my Python implementation of an order of n running time algorithm. What we are doing here is instead of creating a mapping of character to a list of positions, we are creating a more complicated mapping. So for example, let's assume our source string is ABC, ABBA. So we need to create a mapping as below. It will be zero. The zero means starting from zero position zero in the source stream, we, uh, we need to find the appearance of each character, the first appearance of each appearance of each character. So the first appearance of A is at position zero. The first appearance of B is at position one. And the first appearance of C is at position two. Now for the for start at position, start at in, index one, the first appearance of A, so after starting at position 1, the first appearance of A is at position zero, uh, 1, 2, 3, at 3. And B is still at 1. And C is still at 2. And now, starting at index 2, the first appearance of A is at 3. The first appearance of B is at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And the first appearance of C is at 2. Starting at index 3, 
the first appearance of A is at 3, the first appearance of B is at 4, and there's no C after index 3. And uh, starting from index 4, the first appearance of A is at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The first appearance of B is at 4. And I start from index 5. The first appearance of A is at 6. And the first appearance of B is at 5. And I starting from index 6. The first appearance of A is at 6. And then that's, that's the end of the uh, index. So the 6 is the last index of the source string. So with this mapping, when we need to find, for example, we need to find the character C after, after index six, uh, 4, then we can just check this one. So at index 4, there's no C in it, so we need to increment the counter by 1. And then we start from 0, start from position 0. So if we want to find uh, A after 4, for example, a after 4 is 6, so we counter, we counter, we don't update by 1. The counter remains the same, and the position will be at 6. So in this way, the find logic will be order of 1. So this would be the implementation of this code. So this is the logic to create a mapping. And as you can see, we start from the last character. To, in the source to start creating the map because we can copy the object copy the previous uh, pr copy the previous um, uh, mapping so it will be order of one as well here and then for each character in the target we try to find the uh, find the character in the source string by using the mapping it will be in order of one and this is order of n. So t total running time will be order of n, which is linear running time. So this is the end of the video, and I hope you enjoy it, and I also hope you can learn something from it. And I'll see you in the next one.